in this wonderful principle of Christianity. On the other side of the world, revolutionary socialism is taking over. Now that's what they called it. They didn't call it communism. They called it revolutionary socialism. And if you didn't like the form of government they were going to bring to you, they'd kill you. Now that isn't too far different than what the South was given for alternatives. When the North, the gigantic faction, said to the South, either you accept what we're doing or we'll have to come and kill you and burn your property and destroy your property until you finally accept. That isn't too much different than the kind of event that was going on in this depiction. Socialism as dreamed of by Karl Marx. What a great and noble goal for the President of the United States to, to have the man who has proclaimed he would follow the Constitution in his oath of office. Woodrow Wilson proclaimed we need to go to war to make the world safe for democracy. That's a famous statement that he made many times justifying going into World War I. Have you heard any presidents in, presidents in recent years say, we'll take democracy to uh, name some country over there, that's what we're doing, Iraq or Iran or wherever, we're going to take them democracy. Well, just a minute now, what are we taking them? Karl Marx taught in the Communist Manifesto that democracy is the first step to socialism. Oh, but who's read the Communist Manifesto lately? Or ever? We don't read the Constitution, why should we read the Communist Manifesto? There are two ways to achieve socialism, revolution or evolution. When revolutionary socialism was used, they began calling it communism. About the 1917 year, we began saying those that want to burn things down and kill to implement socialism, we'll call them communist. And those that want to do it peacefully and gradually, a little at a time, we'll call socialist. But the end result is the same, a powerful central government that will rule over the people. This is a wonderful illustration of what happened. This is a stained glass window in England created in the home of Beatrice Webb in the year 1910. It's in the town of Surrey. And if you want to hire a photographer, they'll go take a picture for you. I know that because somebody sent me two pictures of this window. And what we learned from this window is this. These socialists created the window in honor of what they had accomplished up to that point in history. These people are Bernard Shaw, Edward Pease, H.G. Wells, and a host of faithful followers. Up at the top it gives their slogan, remold it nearer to the heart's desire. And down here is the world and they're remolding it. Now that's an anvil. This is a billows. He's pumping the billows, blowing air. He's heating the world and now they're going to shape the world to their heart's desire. I relate to that because I'm a blacksmith. Now, are they going to try and destroy the world? No, they're going to reshape it. They're going to reshape it to their heart's desire. Well, what is their heart's desire? You can find that out down here. This stack of material that they're worshiping is not an altar of, of God or, or our Heavenly Father. That's an altar of books. They're worshiping the socialist literature of the period. And the bottom book is called Fabian Tracts and Essays. Many years ago, as a young researcher, I read it. The words of George Bernard Shaw explaining what the utopian society would be. Just what should we do to have a happy society? Here's what we should do. The government should own or control all of the land. Now that, that map is an outdated map. The black area is claimed ownership by the federal government. The white area is state and private land. That map is old. There's more black area today. The federal government keeps acquiring more land. This is the state of Nevada. The number's higher than 87% today. The black area is the ground the federal government claims they own. Government ownership or control of the land in the ideal society. In the ideal society, the government should own or control the industry. Each one of these is worth an hour. We'll give them each 10 seconds. The government should control labor. The government should control communications and transportation. The government should control all credit. The government should control all insurance. Ever heard of workman's compensation, unemployment, social security, Medicare, Medicaid? 
government should control the educational system. Karl, Karl Marx in the Communist Manifesto says the government should provide free education in public schools. That's right out of the Communist Manifesto. Elimination of the significance of the family. Elimination of the significance of religion. What are they doing in this picture? Removing the Ten Commandments from public property after Judge Roy Moore refused to deny God. Establishment of a minimum wage. Ah, oh, what a great blessing to the poor if we can just raise the minimum wage some more. A universal system of pensions. Here's Franklin Roosevelt signing the Social Security Act. Justified use of force if necessary to attain these goals. If you don't like it, we'll force you at the point of a gun. A graduated income tax to pay for our programs. Now actually that one wasn't in the Fabian Tracks and Essays. I didn't see it. So I plucked it out of the Communist Manifesto just so you could see that that was one of their social goals at that time. And down here we have the head of that department, the head of the Internal Revenue Service, and in the newspaper he was quoted as saying, tell us where you are and we'll send you money. Remember the lesson on economy and the Mr. Oh, the, the economist that was in charge that came up with this grand idea to deduct a little bit each month from your check so it wouldn't look so bad at the end of the year. <laughs> the pay-as-you-go plan, the Brummel pay-as-you-go plan, that's what they called it. Now, that is socialism. That's it. Oh, there may be more. I've given you an example. I found those personally. I found them in that material, that reading material that was written in 1910 or earlier. I just quoted from material that's over a hundred years old. And we've accepted all of it. Well now, right between these two men, right here, is the coat of arms that they created to illustrate how they will accomplish their objectives. The coat of arms. What is that? Wolf. It's a wolf in a sheepskin. A wolf in a sheepskin. Here's another symbol that they use. This is a tortoise with a dragon's head. That's Valerie Giscard d'Estaing, the former president of France, and they're creating the European Union. And they're having one of their daily discussions, and he sets this out on the table to inspire the leadership. We'll do it just a little at a time, like a tortoise with a dragon's head. Here's another symbol that's used. This was described by one of the people that I hold in high respect. He says, socialism is the plan of the evil one and likened these socialist programs to the tentacles of an octopus. Socialism is not just bad, it's evil. It is the old deluder's counterfeit of the perfect law of liberty. Now here's what we need to do. One artist drew this special for our lesson. We've got to run off this wolf in the sheepskin. We've got to tie up this octopus, get those tentacles so they can't get into our lives. And we've got to turn over the tortoise. If we accomplish this, we could have freedom once again. But alas, most of us don't know we need to do that. And so now we're quoting another scripture from the Old Testament. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge.